Now, I have to explain some definitions to you so you don't get lost in this lesson. What is a genetic bottleneck? It's when a population experiences a drastic reduction in size due to an environmental catastrophe. Think climate change, war, or a plague. Only a small number survive, and those survivors pass on a limited genetic diversity to future generations. Now imagine pouring a rainbow of jelly beans into a bottle. Only a few fit through the neck and whatever colors make it through become only ones that you get to eat for centuries. That's what happens in the Caucasus. So let's start out with some what if questions. What if whiteness wasn't divine design but divine discipline, a way of exposing what happens when we step out of the garden into a gene splicing with the fallen sons of God? See in the scriptures Genesis 6 and 4, the sons of God saw the daughters of man. This is the origins of the Nephilim, a spiritual bloodline corruption. Science actually confirms this. Modern Europeans carry 1 to 4% Neanderthal DNA. But West Africans, <laughs> zero. <laughs> oh my girl, say it ain't so. Because Neanderthals never made it to Africa. What, 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 what? They were ice age cave dwellers in Europe and Asia. Yeah, do that fact check. Go to Max Planck Institute, a draft sequence of the Neanderthal genome. 2010. Oh, I want to connect these dots for you. I want to show you how it all fits together. See, Genesis says man came from dirt, black, rich, fertile soil. Science says that the first humans were black. DNA says pelt features came from the bottleneck trauma and mutation. History says Europe became white through replacement, warfare, and evolution. And guess what? The term Caucasian literally comes from Caucasus Mountains. The very spot where this pell mutation event occurred. So next time someone says, I'm Caucasian, kindly hand them a map and a mirror and the mitochondria DNA report.